It's September 27, 1829, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. The trend for archaeology, that is A-R-K-ology, was kick-started on this day in 1829 when the German explorer Friedrich Parrott ascended to the top of the Ararat Mountains in Armenia, believed at the time to be the final resting place of Noah's Ark. And of their summit, one of his companions, Kakatar Abovian, wrote, Our souls were enveloped with happiness and we were overcome with unimaginable gaiety. We began to run around in this and that direction to view the lower lying valleys and ridges. But Parrot, uh, sort of uh, rather more prosaically, noted that the summit didn't have space for an ark, specifically Noah's ark. And so he must have parked it on one of the lower places. And that's why they were looking down below them to try to spot where it must have <laughs> Right. He must have done valet parking. That's what happened. <laughs> Considering that Christians for centuries have been saying that this was where Noah's Ark was located. I mean, the religious aspect seems to be more of an afterthought. Not so for Abovian. Abovian was very into the religious side. He'd fasted on the ascent, which sounds very difficult. He had planted a wooden cross at the summit. Then he put some ice in a bottle to take away as holy water. But Parrot was kind of looking around and he spotted a saddle, which is sort of the valley between two peaks. And he wrote later in his account that it may be supposed to be the very spot on which Noah's Ark rested, if the summit itself be assumed as the scene of that event, for there is no want of the requisite space. So basically saying, <laughs> yeah, it's big enough to park a big boat. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's not where they parked uh, <laughs> the symbol of vengeance and salvation from the Bible that's clearly not meant to be taken literally, but it probably isn't, was the conclusion. Uh, but we should explain why people thought Mount Ararat in Armenia was the home of Noah's Ark for centuries, partly due to Marco Polo, so in 1271, in the journals of his journey to China, he wrote, In the heart of Greater Armenia is a very high mountain, shaped like a cube or cup, on which Noah's Ark is said to have rested. <laughs> Note, even in 1271, he's saying, probably a rumour. Whence <laughs> it is called the mountain of Noah's Ark. And that had come about because of a folk tale that they had in Armenia, that a monk had once tried to journey up to the top of the mountain to verify the rumours he'd heard that the Ark was there. And every time he fell asleep and woke up, he was back at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> to which the obvious conclusion is, aha, divine intervention. God saying, don't scale the mountain. And then God gave him a piece of the Ark. An angel came down and gave him a piece of the Ark as a present, which was then put on display, but then discredited for centuries because obviously it isn't part of Noah's Ark. <laughs> but that's where this story came from. Yeah, and that fragment of the Ark was something that Parrot and his companions were shown when they set up their base camp in the particular village where this monk was meant to have had this revelation. But you do just get the sense the whole way through that Parrot is like, oh, okay, that's good. Uh, <laughs> because I suppose he was a man of science. He'd studied medicine and natural science at university, and he kind of parlayed that into a life of mountaineering, which at the time was a pursuit that wasn't meant to be done for its own enjoyment. And you can't help but feel that Parrot did quite enjoy climbing mountains. Yeah, he'd made several expeditions in his capacity as a naturalist, including to the Alps and the Pyrenees. And he'd done some climbing in the Caucasus Mountains. And that seems to be where he got the taste for it. Because as you mentioned, Arian, mountaineering as a sport or a hobby was very much in its infancy. You know, people lived in the mountains, people traded in the mountains. And there are accounts of people going up them for religious or symbolic ceremonies. But people didn't just go for fun. You know, um, Parrot was born in 17. 1991, just a few years after Mont Blanc had been scaled for the first time. And then the early 1800s, some more alpine peaks were climbed, and that was slowly introducing this idea. So it was really beginning to take off, and it does seem like Parrot was more interested in the mountaineering and the science side than the pseudo-religious side. But actually, this particular mountaineering doesn't sound like a lot of fun. I mean, this was actually <laughs> his third attempt to climb the Ararat Peak. Um, the first one had begun on the 12th of September, you know, he and his group were staying in caves because there are no huts or refuges. They're ascending higher than humans ever previously have in, in record. They're eating only what they can hunt. Some Sherpas passed out and had to go back to base camp. It was only on this time that he decided he should take horses. <laughs> Duh. Uh, which meant he could go a bit further before conking out. But it was cold. I mean, the whole yeah. thing was covered in perpetual snow, which, of course, really, if you're being rational... Is, is why people had said that Noah's Ark was at the top of this mountain, because they thought it was inaccessible. They thought no one would ever be able to prove it, i.e. quite a good place to claim that a fictional boat is buried. 
and it had been really quite inaccessible up until just before this day because it was perched between the Ottoman and Persian empires, which meant that it really wasn't safe for Christian travellers to be going around this area. But that changed after the Russo-Persian War of 1826-28, to which ended with a treaty that put Ararat firmly in Russian terrain. And fortunately, Parrot had a quite good connection to Russia in that his father had been quite pally with the Tsar Alexander, who was uh, Emperor of Russia just prior to this time. And Parrot drew on that connection to um, make contact with uh, Alexander's successor, Nicholas I. And so he was able to convince him that he should be allowed to go and do this. The Tsar actually (laughs) sent one of his own team members along to go with him. So he evidently had a a bit of a, a stake in the game and off they headed to Ararat. Yeah, the Tsar provided a military escort for the party. And considering that mountaineering wasn't really a thing at the time, there weren't other mountaineers in the group. It was it was just Parrot and then two medical students, two scientists and the military escort. And then they picked up a couple of locals along the way to act as their guides. The Tsar connection did end up paying off in another way as well, which was that Parrot was so impressed with the Bovian's conduct on the expedition that he arranged a Russian state scholarship for him to study at the University of Dorpat. In, it's Estonia now, but it was a German colony at the time. And and Abovian would go on to be a really famous figure in Armenia. He was a poet, an educator, a reformer, and until he suddenly disappeared in 1848, he vanished without a trace. It's one of the um, you know Armenian historical mysteries. Oh, really? Maybe he's buried at the top of Mount Ararat. That must be it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to feel, though, that Arbovian and the believers in the group were kind of responsible for at least the second attempt going awry, which was in part because they'd tried to bring an enormous cross with them that they were planning to erect on the summit. And halfway up, they were like, we just can't do this. This is madness. And we have to turn back. And so that's what led to that also, one failing. Like, they've forgotten which testament it's in. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, Noah does yeah. not know what that means. Yeah. Bring a tiny wooden ark. <laughs> there is actually some biblical basis to the idea that the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. I mean, if you believe in the ark at all, it's as good a place as any for it to come to rest. Genesis says the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat, which is believed to refer to Uratu, which was a kingdom in the Armenian highlands. It's the right location. It's the right mountain range. However, there's no specific evidence pointing at Mount Ararat. And to be clear, Mount Ararat was the name given to it after this association yeah. was made. At the time, it was not called Mount Ararat. Even now, the Turks call it Arida, the Armenians call it Masis. No one was calling this particular mountain Mount Ararat. It was just the mountains in this particular part of the world. And if you look at the scripture closely, there is evidence that whoever wrote it was not talking about modern day Armenia. For instance, the biblical account goes on to say that after the ark washed up, Noah and his family traveled west and settled in Shinar, which is in modern day Iraq. And obviously, if you've landed in Armenia and you travel west, you're not going to end up in Iraq. Even if it was the right location and even if the Ark was there at one stage, it does seem particularly pig-headed to go looking for a former wooden structure on what is also a volcanic (laughs) mountain range and has erupted many times and presumably the first thing that would go up is any trace of wood. (laughs) Although what I do quite like, which I suppose you would get if you sent a load of credulous Germans up any snowy peak, is there is some practical advice for someone embarking on such a thoroughly whimsical and pointless exercise in his diaries. So, for example, Parrot says to uh, consume onion broth at night. Mm -hmm. Uh, He says it's a dish I would recommend to all mountain travellers in preference to meat broth as being extremely warm and invigorating. That's a bit of practical advice for you. Also, don't go mountaineering (laughs) with a giant, giant cross on your back. (laughs) Bad idea. But even though they did not find an ark at the top of Mount Ararat, it has not put people off trying in the, you know, 200 odd years since to make the same journey, including a really odd one. James Irwin, a NASA astronaut, the eighth person to walk on the moon, during his mission on Apollo 15 in 1971, he experienced a religious epiphany and he would go on to spend years and years trying to scale Ararat. He made seven unsuccessful attempts for it to give up due to he was getting old and his health wasn't great. Yeah, well, there are still Christian scholars now who are attempting to uh, justify that area of Armenia as being the resting place for the Ark. They tend to use technology now, of course, so they're looking for something buried in the snow 
that's thousands of years old, that's 450 feet long precisely, 75 foot wide and 35 feet high, as if it wouldn't have eroded at all during this period. There was a team of evangelical Christian explorers that in 2010 claimed to have found Noah's Ark, which prompted an archaeologist called Paul Zemansky to say, I don't know of any expedition that ever went looking for the Ark and didn't find it. <laughs> Tomorrow. So the French army intervened after a week of the Prime Minister hiding in the French embassy. Ditch the ads and get a Sunday episode when you join Club Retrospectors. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, part of the ACAST Creator Network.